Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Kelly and I were both really excited to go to Maker Faire. Ready to go to Maker Faire? Yeah. I'd heard a lot about Maker Faire on YouTube and podcasts, and I've always wanted to go. Kelly didn't know much about it, but she's always up for an adventure. We hopped on a flight out of Eugene, headed for San Fran. I've gotten to be buddies with the guys at CNC Rider Parts after I bought my plasma table from them. They got in touch a while ago and asked if I'd have interest in coming down to Maker Faire and using one of their tables to build something over the course of the weekend. Which sounded like a ton of fun and something I couldn't say no to. We got to the show Friday morning and had a couple hours of setup before the doors opened. I got in one test cut just as the show floor opened and people started flooding in. So it's very random, but I decided to build a 10 foot tall replica of the Eiffel Tower as my project at Maker Faire. The main one. We've got two lights on at the Eiffel Tower. At the end of the first day, I was feeling like I'd gotten in way over my head, as we had only gotten two legs done, and it was looking a little pathetic. But I had a full day Saturday ahead of us, and I jumped in and got an early start. The booth was drawn in great crowds. There was just a ton to look at with all the different machines running and making things. Loud noises and sparks, dust and chips piling up, computers and robots. It was a good booth. It worked out great that we were able to get a space right next to the CNC router parts booth and we were able to combine and basically had one giant booth. There were always people floating over to my side of the booth to give a hand when needed. In the weeks leading up to the fair, I lived in this model of the Eiffel Tower. I must have put 50 hours into it. I was able to download a really good model to start off with, which is what made it all possible. But I still had to go in and draw every line myself and make it work so it could be cut out of individual pieces from flat sheets of metal. Once I had my version done, I broke it apart and fit the pieces onto four foot by two foot sheets as efficiently as possible. I used straight cuts on corners as fold lines and added in tabs that I could bolt through to hold everything together since I won't be able to weld at the show. It was hard because I really needed to keep the machine cutting. I needed to work on the tower and I also really wanted to talk to people passing by who always had a million questions about what I was working on. The first day I was a little stressed trying to manage it all. But by the second and third day, I started to get the hang of it and started to really enjoy the experience and have fun. Just working in front of people was a very different experience for me. Usually it's just Drake watching me work, and that's just to see when I throw the tennis ball for him. For safety at the show, the plasma table needed to be in an enclosure, which is kind of a bummer because you couldn't see it as much, but it beats handing out safety glasses to everyone walking by, I guess. It was neat seeing people stop back by multiple times over the weekend to check up on my progress. It's also great to meet in person some of the people that watch these videos. I love seeing how diverse of a group it was. I talked to all different kinds of people with different backgrounds that had somehow stumbled across my YouTube channel, and I love that so much. My hands got mangled working with all this sheet metal over the course of the weekend, which is great for shaking hands with people walking by. My favorite joke I got to use quite a few times over the weekend was when someone would ask me if I had designed it, and I would say, nah, it was some French dude's design. My favorite part of running the table was opening the closure after the finished cutting. It was always super dramatic with smoke billowing out. We only had the fire safety inspector stop by once or twice. really nice once the tower was tall enough to not be working on my knees anymore. It's making progress. 
Being a welder, I was a little embarrassed when I started using zip ties to hold some of the corners together. But they worked great, and there seemed to be an endless supply of them in the booth. Since it was our first time at Maker Faire, Kelly and I really tried to take advantage of it and get out of the booth to see some of the show as well. Man, there's just a million things to look at in all directions. It was almost sensory overload. I knew the premise of the fair was based around people making things, but I didn't realize how broad of a scope the kinds of things people would be showing at the fair would be. The fair was huge too. I think there were seven or eight buildings and each had a slightly different theme. Our booth was in the digital fabrication building, which had a lot of 3D printers and other CNC equipment. But there's also even areas with things like handmade clothes and jewelry that were a lot of fun to walk through too. You never knew what you were gonna see around the corner and you needed at least a couple days to see it all. There's just a lot of people that were really passionate about making things, regardless of what it was. And I think that was the common thread throughout the whole show. So what CNC Router Parts was making at their booth with their machines were really cool ping pong ball crossbows. And they were auctioning them off every 30 minutes. The surplus stockade was right next to where I was working and I was very tempted to sneak one into my toolbox. Three days had flown by, and we were down to the last couple hours before we had to head for the airport. I'd accepted that I wasn't quite going to finish the tower, but I thought I could quickly throw up two of the top pieces so you could at least get a sense of the finished height. It killed me not getting it done, but the crew offered to drop it off at the barn as they passed through with the truck on the way back up to Washington. With the Eiffel Tower back in the barn, I jumped right back in on working on it. I was excited to get it finished up. But first, a quick word about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. With hundreds of customizable settings, including fonts, colors, and page configurations, Every Squarespace website can be made to look unique with just a few clicks. The best way to see just how easy it is to build a beautiful, unique website with Squarespace is to jump in and use their free trial. Drake's been bugging me to help him start a blog for a long time now, and I thought this seemed like the perfect opportunity to finally make it happen. I made him his own computer to manage the blog so he'd keep his paws off mine, and we started looking at all the different template options Squarespace has to offer and picked our favorite one and right away started adding posts showing what Drake's been getting up to on the farm. Squarespace does such a great job of keeping things simple and intuitive, while still having all the deeper options and customization available if you really want to tweak things and have complete control over how your website will look. I think one of the coolest features Squarespace has is it automatically scales to other devices and gives you a preview of how it'll look on a phone or a tablet. Check out the description for a link to Drake's blog and a link to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. There's a ton of fun working on the Eiffel Tower at Maker Faire, and such a great experience. But man, it was good being back in my shop. I was back in my comfort zone again. I started in on cutting the last few pieces I needed to finish up the tower. It was really nice being able to see the cutting torch again. Just a lot easier to keep tabs on it and watch the tip outs. CNC Router Parts announced at Maker Faire that they're rebranding. They said they felt they outgrew their name and sell a lot more than just parts now. Their new name is Avid CNC. 
Before I left, I stole a couple nameplates for them to put on my table. I might have also stolen something else. Don't tell on me. Just had one more sheet to cut. Here's a quick one. I couldn't wait to get rid of the zip ties. When people were walking by at the fair seeing me zip tie pieces together, I felt a strange urge to shout, I know how to weld, seriously I do. I skipped on cutting these lower plates at the fair, thinking I could go back to them if I had time. I didn't, but now I do. And it was on to the final section of the spire. I thought out the tops and gave each piece a slight bend before welding them together. It wasn't a perfect fit on the lower section. I was a little more uh, freeform at the fair, but yeah, close enough. And at the very top goes the observation deck for ants. A huge thanks to CNC router parts, uh, oops. I mean, Avid CNC for providing the table and all the help over the course of the weekend. They're a good group of people to hang out with and we loved getting to be a part of the show with them. Thanks to Sammy for lending me some of her footage from the show for this video. Kelly and I had a blast at Maker Faire and we're so glad we went. I was really bummed to hear it announced afterwards that it sounds like it'll be the last Maker Faire, as the company that put it on is shutting down. I saw a lot of parents taking their wide-eyed and enthusiastic kids to the show, and I stuck that in the back of my brain as a thing I wanted to do down the road. So it's a little bittersweet that that won't be happening, but I felt really lucky to have gotten to go this last year before it shut down. So now I just gotta figure out what the heck I'm gonna do with a 10 foot tall replica of the Eiffel Tower. Any ideas? Oh, the soldier.